All right, so in the last video, we finished our injection, I mean, our reflection based annotation processor, which was, as I explained before, it was not really an annotation processor. But in this one, we're going to create a real, real life functioning code generating annotation processor. Um, so to achieve this behavior, um, well, this task, we're going to have to um, do a couple things. So, number one, so let me explain to you how annotation processing works um, you know, very briefly. When you compile your code, if you are if you define any annotation process to run beforehand, delegate um, delegate run, and then if they generate any code, that generate the code and your code will get compiled together, creating the, the final result, which might be a jar file or whichever is that your output format is. Um, so to do that, your annotation processes are also classes, right? So they need to get compiled um, before they can be run. So if you put them in the same module and then compile it at the same time and, and define your annotation processor within the same module, um, you'll get an error because um, it will try to run your defined annotation processor, but it won't be compiled at that time. So what we do here is we, we put the annotation processor in a separate module. Um, so that module gets compiled first, and then you're able to call and depend on that module in your actual, uh, where your code is, where annotation processing is enabled. So in your module where you have the annotation processor, you're going to turn off the annotation processing because all you want in that module is for your annotation processor to be compiled. So that compiled annotation processor will get called in the module where you need it to be called and where annotation processes are enabled and defined. Um, I know it's verbally it doesn't make sense, but let's get coding again and then it will make a lot more sense. So here, um, basically I'm gonna add a different module. It'll be a Java module. I'm gonna call it annotation. Oh, and processor. Like all processors. Um, let me also explain. Let me also explain why, not why. Um, what we're gonna do here. Uh, remember uh, how we create our builders, but we didn't create the builders. I mean, the builders were not automated. You had to write the whole thing ourselves. So we're gonna basically create an anno builder annotation, and then the moment you tag a class with the builder annotation it'll create a builder for that class. Um, so the whole creation of builders will be automated. So let's just finish this. So we have our processes here. Um, so I'm going to have this module have, have the exact same folder pattern. Because that's how I like it. So you just follow along. Or at this point, you can pull. You will push. I mean, a pull, and then uh, you don't have to do all this manually. So main Java. Ready Java? Yes. Okay. Um. Over. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and create our processor here, but I won't add anything to it just yet. I'm going to create a class with it. Builder processor. It'll do nothing. And then I'll add. Whoops. So Java gives us the base class for it. It's called abstract processor. That's that's all there is to the uh, processor. I mean, obviously, it actually has a lot more functionality than you can see here. So. Okay, so we had this here, so let's go to our project structure so we can add that module as a dependency and change this, its, mod, its uh, folder pattern here. So make your Java source. Your source is no longer the source. Apply, so go to your actual original module, and then you want to add that module, the other one, as a dependency. Okay, apply. Great. Okay, so here, under main, you create a directory called resource. And 
under resources, meta, INF. And then under that, create a, um, don't quite remember the name here. Oh, yeah. Services. And then create a file with the name Java X annotation dot processing dot processor. Okay. And then you go back to project structure and add that um, resources file as a resource. I mean, uh, add that set that resources file as your actual resource. All right. So here you gotta have you need to put the full path class path name of your oops of your processor. So let's just add that. Okay, it's tripping. Forget to update this. All right, go back there. Do the same thing here. Okay, so your processor is set. It should run to confirm that it is it does get run. Um, process environment. Get message. I'm going to just print a test warning. Alright, so let's build it, see what happens. Wow. What They're importing the wrong ones here. All right, so I'm gonna stop recording, fix all this, and come. All right, so fix those uh, import issues. Um, okay, so we're ready. So this is our annotation processor, like I mentioned, and then we're gonna do a couple of things here. We're gonna need to tell the processor to the processor needs to know which annotation it's gonna run for, and then which source version. So we're gonna set them here. Okay, so these two methods. Uh, first, let's create our annotations. Uh, remember how the other pr in the other video we the retention policy for it was runtime. It's going to be source, and then all right. So um, we need to give it a target. Target is basically where you can use your annotation processor. So we want this to be um, type. Type basically means class, so you can only annotate your class types with this annotation. And then it's going to have no value because yeah, you just tag I mean, annotate a class with this, and then that class will end up being builder. I mean, the class itself won't be builder. We'll just generate a builder class for it, and it'll make more sense when it's actually working. So again, do what I told you to do here. Copy, reference, and then add that here. So we need to create, so it accepts a set of class names. OK, so add your class reference here in terms of a string, and then this should be the source version of the project. In my case, it's 10. So, OK. Again, let's build it. That is here, no errors. Perfect. So, yeah, so our annotation will run. To basically show you guys an example, you know how we have this class here? Um, so this class is actually a perfect candidate. Oh, I forgot to zoom in again, I guess. Um, by the way, I did come up like if you read a way to improve screen resolutions, I'm sure. Uh, uh, let me know if the quality is getting better because it should. All right, so let's go back to this class. So I want to create a builder for this class. I annotated with obviously we don't have it's not going to create one because we do nothing so far 
We're going to build a project. I need the messages. No errors. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to cut it off here. Um, in the next video, we'll, we'll, we'll go through actual generation of our builder class. And then um, it's going to be perfect. Thanks. Um, well, I actually forgot to tell you guys about a very important thing. Um, right now, our annotation processor is actually not running because we forgot to create our own annotation profile in IntelliJ. So let's just do that. Um, so click Settings and then go to Annotation Processors here. And then here, um, create an annotation processor profile and call it Builders. And then move the main module, not the other one, into this. Remember, this, this the, the, your processor module does not run the processor. It is the processor. So all that process, uh, module needs to do is to get compiled, and that's it. Uh, this processor in the other module will get run in your builders, uh, in your actual original module. And I click on this, and I click enable processing. Apply. Um, should be ready. You should be good to go. And then rebuild the project. Okay. Yep. That's all you have to do. Thanks.